Qatar. Saudis have withdrawn their um, uh, ambassador. UAE has withdrawn their ambassador. They seem to be giving shelter to Muslim Brotherhood as we are depending more and more on them for our uh, advanced military bases. Can, can you give me an idea of what's, what, what is their strategy? Yeah, I'm happy to take it. Um, well, they have, shall we say, a complicated strategy. Uh, on the one hand, they've always wanted to punch above their weight, and they use Al Jazeera to create a kind of platform for, them, for themselves within the region. They have felt that they could be a kind of bridge between warring factions. But you also had the, the last emir looked at the Muslim Brotherhood almost in heroic terms, not just to be a bridge between Islamists and non-Islamists, but they were, Qatar was largely supportive, and he, in the person of the emir, was largely supportive of the Muslim Brotherhood. I used to joke that they liked the Muslim Brotherhood everywhere except in Qatar. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is, they will continue to try to play this kind of a role. The reason you've seen an alienation by the Saudis and by the Emiratis is partly... And in, by the Egyptians. And by the Egyptians. Is largely related to the Muslim Brotherhood. Prior to that time, though, was also because... In the case of the Saudis and the Emiratis, they looked at Qatar through a lens of deep suspicion over the way their relationship was with Iran. That began to evolve somewhat. They obviously want to have a kind of safety net with us. If you're playing with different parties, you still, at the end of the day, want a kind of an insurance policy. Well, what's your insurance policy? How about having a huge American base? In the end, when you have a huge American base there, we have a pretty large stake in you. So what they really want to do is kind of have a finger in sort of every pot. And that's the way they've managed things to this point. Now, given their wealth, uh, which is quite high, that also gives them, shall we say, a certain capacity to be operating. Mohammed, why don't you give us the Egyptian perspective? Well, I, I find it very difficult to explain what Qatari foreign policy is about. Uh, I'd prefer to leave that to uh, the Qataris themselves, I think. He's really a diplomat. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll excuse it from him. Well, what do you think it's about? Well, I mean, what, what, what I think is that um, there, there was a point uh, a few years ago when the Muslim Brotherhood was the rising star in the region. If, if you wanted to uh, uh, bet on the future, it would make sense to bet on the Muslim Brotherhood. I think that has been completely reversed now. And so uh, it is up to countries that made that cal calculation a few years ago to start revising their calculation. And it takes different countries, different periods of time to do that. Robert, they haven't exactly, I mean, they, they seem that they want to get rid of Assad, and that's a very you know, noble aim. But they haven't exactly been constructive in Syria either. Frankly, the Qataris have done more to help the armed opposition than anyone, um, along Which one? with the Turks. Well, let me explain. Um, remember, when this started, when the fighting started in late 2011, there was no Islamic State. And even there really wasn't even a large al-Qaeda presence at the time. Um, that developed over time. The Qataris were pretty sloppy in terms of who they they gave uh, assistance to. They didn't have a good vetting process. And to be honest, they weren't getting any help from anybody else on that. Um, and they did ask, and they just didn't get the help that they asked for. So uh, I think now there's a much greater understanding among the senior Qataris who work at least on Syria that the Al Qaeda and the Islamic State are problems. And even some of the other Islamist groups in Syria also are a problem. And it's very interesting if you look carefully at what the Islamist groups, not the crazies, not the Islamic State, not the Al-Qaeda affiliated Nusra, the other Islamists, you'll see them actually walking back their rhetoric. Um, it's been very noticeable what they're putting on YouTube, what they're putting on Twitter about coexistence, about tolerance. We'd like an Islamic State, but we're not going to impose it. Um, and I think the Qataris are weighing in a lot on that. The Qataris certainly weighed in very heavily to get those hardline Islamist groups, not 
Islamic State, not Nusra, but the other Islamist groups to accept a Geneva peace process. They wouldn't listen to the Americans, but they did listen to the Qataris. That's a, Geneva's a whole nother panel. Just it's note, by the way, the Qataris in Libya were providing arms to the, uh, to the Islamists uh, against our advice and without letting us know. 